Hello, I'm William Broom, and this is the panel show's Hear the Music. And just look at this backdrop. You don't get more, and I'm not exaggerating the term, you don't get much more iconic than this. We've got the bridge, we've got the opera house, and we're coming to you from the suburb of Kirribilli. On today's show, we're very honoured to have as our special guest a musician from Western Sydney, from the band Noon Shift, Nick Lowe. Welcome to the panel show's Hear the Music. How are you going? Uh, pretty good. How are you? I'm great. And to have this as a backdrop, you don't get much better. No, not at all. It's unreal. Tell us a bit about your music. A bit about the music. Well, I mean, we started playing together in Year 8 um, at Guitar Ensemble. So one of the teachers put it all together. And uh, at one point we just decided, oh, let's try doing a band. And uh, I guess we just stuck with it. Uh, we've written a few songs, put a few out on the uh, internet and that kind of stuff, played a few gigs and uh, yeah, just enjoying ourselves with it. When did your interest in music first start? Good question. I guess it's something that a lot of people would probably say they have from birth. It's kind of like you just grow up and just anything music, you're just like, oh shit, that's cool. And um, I think as you get older, or as I got older, you start to have an interest in uh, like starting to develop it rather than just like a feeling. It's like it starts to become something that you do. Hopefully that's not too cryptic and makes some sort of sense. But yeah, it's just something that you grow up with and yeah. And you set the band up with some classmates. How did they get involved? Um, well, we all kind of met in guitar ensemble at school because I mean we all wanted to play music and it was all like year seven, year eight, you go to new high school and you don't really know anyone, so you're like, oh, well, let's, um, let's join the guitar ensemble and see who's there. So we all kind of met each other through that, and you know, we were getting along pretty well just there. And um, I mean, I had one, I had my, bla my bass player, Michael, was in a few of my classes, so we got along pretty well, and we just decided, yeah, let's do a band. Now, who inspires your music? Oh, I'd say the big ones would be Foo Fighters, like I've been listening to them since I was maybe nine or so, still loving it. Um, they'd be the big ones. Uh, Gang of Youths, mm -hmm. they're like newer. Do you listen to them at all? I know Foo Fighters. Gang yeah. of Youths, I worry I'm getting a little bit too old for that kind of thing. That's but do check them out, Gang of Youths. There you go, free shout out. Yeah, um, yeah they're, they're great. Uh, new, I mean, you can't beat the classics, like you can't beat uh, ACDC. Love always, ACDC, yeah, saw great. them live in concert in Milton Keynes in the UK. Oh, you're One kidding. of the most amazing concerts I've yeah. been to. Uh, there's the guy who comes out in his school uniform. Oh, and totally. Wild. I mean, these guys were probably 50s, 60s, but they still had it. Yeah, Long way it's to wild. the top, fun just, stuff. <laughs> all, all those great Can't songs. Beat it. Yeah, great stuff. I mean, those would be the big ones, I'd say. Yeah. It's fantastic to hear somebody so young, because you're only 19, who loves these Aussie rockers? Oh yeah, you can't beat the Aussie rockers. Yeah, I mean, unless you're the American rockers, they're pretty good too. Now you describe your, your genre as alternative rock. What do you mean by that? Yeah, honestly, haven't put a whole lot of thought into how it's alternative rock. I I'm think asking it's just, the tough questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I don't know, we listen to Foo Fighters, people say, oh, they're alternative rock. And a lot of the music I listen to is alternative rock. And I suppose if the music that you write is kind of a, uh, um, affected by the music you listen to, I'd say that it's alternative rock because of that. Now tell us a bit about the passion behind your music. The passion behind it? I mean, as I said, it's just um, something that we all grew up enjoying. Just, uh, I guess it's quite special um, to be able to be a musician and um, have that outlet to mm -hmm you know, express yourself in, because I mean, I guess everyone has their outlet, whether it be like sports or, you know, visual arts or whatever. Um, but I suppose for me it's music and the passion behind it's usually just uh, emotions or, you know, something you saw on a TV show that you want to write about. I guess it's just um, to share your thoughts in one way or another. In 2018 you released your debut album, Fuse. How did that come about? That's funny actually, we started, um, we started that off by playing something called Youth Rock, which like, if you're a young band you should do it, it's fun as. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's called Youth Rock and it's just this competition where um, high schools get a representative band from each school if they're interested and they um, just take part in that and the winners get prizes. So because we came like third or something, 
um, we won studio time. So Congratulations. Like, <laughs> thank you. That's a pretty awesome prize. Yeah, that's a great prize. Because studio time doesn't come cheap, does it? No, it's, it's like a decent prize, especially mm. like a full day. It can cost you a fair bit. And so. when you're a student, every yeah. penny counts. Yeah, mm. very well said. Yeah. I try. <laughs> I had elocution. Oh, I don't even know what that word <laughs> means. Enlighten me. It hurts. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so we won that studio time. So we're like, oh, shit, we should play our have something to record. So we wrote a few songs, like uh, we were working on a few, and we decided to just put them down, and we're like, oh, well, I guess we got the songs recorded, go put them out and put them together, and yeah, it just kind of came about that way. When you write a song, what inspires the song? Where do you get your ideas from? Other songs. Other songs? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, like, I don't know, there's like that saying, great artist steal. Mm -hmm. Not a great artist. You're not a plagiarizer, though. What's that? You're not a plagiarizer. No, nah, you just got to, it's like when you chuck it through, um, when you're doing your assignment, you chuck it through uh, other thing. It's like plagiarism checker, and then you just change it of so course. it doesn't uh, come so up you can get away with it. Exactly. But what I'm getting at is the <laughs> concepts to your songs. The concept. Is it life experience? Mm -hmm. What comes into it? Is it yeah. sadness you've experienced? Is it happiness? Is it joy? I think it's a bit of everything, I suppose. Um, it's uh, kind of the light and dark of, of uh, you know, of life in general and inspires the music and I kind of draw from my own relationships and experiences and sometimes it's like kind of weird but I'll like try and relate to mm. people from TV shows like um, you know The Walking Dead and whatnot. Yeah. great show um, like yeah so if there's a story or something from that that I kind of relate to I try and understand you know that character and um, kind of write from their perspective and yeah that kind of inspires the words and the music's mostly inspired by things that I like the sound of um, from the artists that I listen to. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, you're inspired by bands like the Foo Fighters and of course, my favourite band, Gang of Youths. They're amazing. I've got all their singles, their albums, they're on YouTube, they're everywhere. They so, are. So there's a number of you in the band. I think there's what, four of you? Yeah. Do you ever square have any, number. Do you, it's a good square number, a good even number. Do you ever find any challenges working together? Yeah, of course we do. Sometimes. Sometimes it's just about, you know. You know what? That's probably the best question so far because I can't answer it. But, um. Oh, I'm difficult today, <laughs> aren't I? <laughs> I'd say. I guess the, the challenge is kind of just making sure that everyone's voice is heard. I mean, I guess for me personally, as probably like the person who comes up with the basis of the songs. You kind of, or well, I personally come up with like a kind of vision for what everything sounds like, but the important thing is that the everyone else in the band is um, is a contributor, and because of that, I suppose everyone needs to have an equal an equal part in in writing. So yeah. What do you love most about songwriting? Well, I'd say the biggest thing I enjoy about it is the ability to kind of express yourself and you know, and your thoughts and emotions through music, that would be a big one. I suppose it's also just fun to, um, to have created something and to look back on it and know that you left a mark. I mean, I guess that's kind of the same with anything. I mean, if you, like I enjoy gardening, mm -hmm. so sometimes um, you, uh, you, you plant something, you look back at your mm -hmm. thing that's grown and uh, you say, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I put that there. And I suppose it's the same with music. What's been your reaction to your music so far? Um, I guess most people have liked it, you know, it's been pretty good. Uh, I think, yeah, I think people are enjoying it. I guess it's just about getting, getting it to more people so that it's not, um, falling on deaf ears or something, you know. I suppose the important thing about creating music is that you're sharing it, especially if you feel like it's important, you know. Do you have any groupies? Groupies. Like big fans who follow you everywhere. Well, we've got our, we've got our group of friends, that's about it right now. Slowly. I think we got one fan. We got one fan that I don't know where she came from. <laughs> Just oh, no, appeared. No. Random. Yeah, but she's very important because, you know, like, it's almost like a proof of concept that, like, what you're doing could be worthwhile, you know? Well, Just it's validation. Know someone enjoys it. Yeah, it's a form exactly. of validation. That's it. Knowing That's that you're doing word. something right and nobody that you've previously been connected yeah. to is giving you that support, giving you that love, it's and weird, telling you they love your music. Yeah, you know what? You put that like so much better than I ever could have. So I oh, I've had years of practice. <laughs> but you're doing brilliantly. It's an absolute honour to have you on the show. Oh, thank you. 
But you perform live sometimes, don't you? Yeah, totally. I think we're playing this Friday, you know, whenever. What kind of venues do you perform in? Uh, mostly it's um, bars and clubs at this point. Um, yeah. What's the reception like? The reception? It's really quite wild. Sometimes, um, um, well, when I say wild, I mean it varies wildly. Not wild all the time. Sometimes it's wild, so sometimes when you have that rowdy crowd and you're playing after everyone's had a few drinks, um, yeah, it's just unreal. Like, it's just really fun and you vibe off the crowd. Other times, there's not a whole lot of people there, but you know what? It's still fun because at the end of the day, you're still on stage with your mates and, you know, you're there creating something, I suppose, um, and not everyone has that opportunity, so it's special. Something I've often wondered is, do you have a trick, and I often ask singers this, for remembering lyrics? No. You just, <laughs> you just, you just got to practice the song. Do you practice. forget them? <laughs> yeah. Practice what do you do? Yeah, How do you, yeah, you forget that? all the time. Um, do you improvise? Well, sometimes you improvise. Sometimes you just murmur them, and sometimes it's just so loud and everyone's so uh, drunk that it doesn't really matter if you murmur the lyrics. Where do you see yourself in 10 years time with the band? Do you think you'll still be going? I hope so. I don't know if I want to commit to anything. I don't want to say that I'll be anywhere. Hopefully, hopefully we're still doing it and hopefully uh, it's been uh, enjoyable. But what would be your dream? The dream? That's a big question. Uh, I suppose just to be able to share it with as many people as possible and um, uh, be able to have people who relate to the music we make and mm. you know just to have it have an effect on people and I think that would be the, the most important part to me. Now what advice do you have for other budding musicians? Jeez, I'm only 19 I don't have much advice <laughs> but uh, I'll try my best. Um, I suppose just just play a lot especially if you're younger just, just practice in the garage and and just um, don't worry about being bad because mm. um, you know you get better. And I suppose that's the thing, you just gotta do it. Like just do it and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And spend as much time as you can doing whatever was you know, whatever your passion is, whatever particular passion in music you have is, whether it be playing with a band or recording mm -hmm. music or just writing songs or singing alone, I suppose just do it a lot. You're only nineteen and I know you say you're only nineteen, but a lot of nineteen year olds like yourself have great life experiences too. But yeah. what advice would you give your younger self? Hmm, that's a good one. It's a tough question. It is a tough question. Advice I give to my younger self, I'd probably say, I don't know, write more songs. Write more songs. Why do you say that? I don't know, because maybe they'd be, uh, a, maybe that'd be a little bit better. You know, <laughs> maybe practice more. <laughs> now you mentioned gardening. Yeah. <laughs> what other interests do you have outside music? Oh uh, well, all the boys um, in the band and I like fishing. Fishing. Yeah, I mean it's a great day, like just you know, Isn't to bring it, it back to the backdrop, like blue imagine, skies, yeah. a harbour, water. Yeah, just going out on the tinny and pulling out some radioactive fish from the Sydney Harbour <laughs> that you can't eat. But. Tasty. <laughs> <laughs> gardening. How did you get into gardening, and why gardening? I don't know. It's fun. Um, well, actually, I've always had like a passion for woodworking, so um, at one point we were doing some work outside. Um, in our backyard and um, we decided that we'd put some pavers in where we previously had grass and I was like, had this vision, I was like, you know what, let's have this whole outdoor yeah. area um, where you can kind of cook and, um, you know, uh, just be with your family and take it easy. So I had this idea, got on Pinterest, you know, yeah. and I looked up, you know, Italian style garden mm -hmm. or something. So the way that relates to the woodworking is that I was like, oh, I'll build a table, yes. a nice, you know, nice hardwood table. Mm. And I was like, well, you need plants to go with it. You can't just be staring at the fence. So you need plants. So I've been getting into planting. I guess I just like to make everything I do a bit better. So Any I've been looking it up. Any types of plants? Anything you can eat. I love strawberries, oranges. So like a vegetable garden, really? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. a fruit garden. Yeah. Mm. And flowers are cool too because they're Beautiful. pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Any other yeah. interests or passions? That's a good question. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to speak on behalf of the band for things we all like. Well, what about you, Nick? Oh. Um, the band is wonderful, but I want to also know <laughs> about you. Okay. Well, 
I don't know, I've got a lot going on adventures just anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, even coming here today was quite the adventure, you know, just mm -hmm. jumping on the train. Even though I've done it a thousand times before, it's still fun to go places, see new things, um, experience things you haven't experienced before. There's so much to see in Sydney. Yeah. It's such a huge city. Oh, totally. And yeah. then to have this so backdrop. Yeah, totally, which mm. is real. Um, yeah, I suppose Yeah, it's a real biggest, backdrop. <laughs> no artificial green screens here. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, I suppose those are the big ones. I mean, apart from like being creative and doing music stuff, I just like to hang out with the people who I enjoy the company of. And, you yeah, know, that's about it. I think yeah, that's, special as it gets. Yeah. that's the main thing, isn't it? To be able to bounce yeah. off people that you get on with, that you have a rapport with. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So for the short-term future, what are your hopes? Hopes? Well, we're going to be releasing some music next year and um, I suppose in a different way to the last um, release we did where we just really wanted to put music out for people to listen to. We're kind of taking it a bit slower and really focusing on, um, on our marketing and and uh, you know, building building an audience and uh, making sure that when we put it out, um, as many people will be able to listen to it as possible. Just so that, like, um, yeah, we can have a lot of uh, people listening to it. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. That's just what uh, we want to do differently. Thanks so much, Nick Lowe, for joining us here on the panel shows. Hear the music with this beautiful backdrop of the Sydney Opera House. We've been coming to you from Kirribilli, and of course my guest has been Nick Lowe from the Western Sydney band Noon Shift. But we can't let you go. You've got to do something for us. Yeah. We want to hear a song. Sure, let's do it. You're okay with that? Yeah. Can't wait.
The big one would be like being able to um, express your thoughts and your feelings through, uh, through another kind of thing, um, like a different format than okay, just We just had the bell, go, right we'll out. take that from the top. Oh, okay. Do you want me sure. to ask, ask the question again, Bruce? Yeah, just wait till we come in. Yeah, what? I might turn my phone off too. Right. That reminds me. Good thinking. 